Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. And we are back in the world of diversity and inclusion. And we are here with my friend, Bernadette Smith. How are you, Bernadette? Great to see you, Matt. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm doing really well. Uh, yeah. My life is good. So thank you for having me. It's um, got nothing to complain about. No, you and I, our lives have, have intertwined, uh, um, you know, over the years through, because uh, you've been so focused over all these years in the whole, in the worlds of diversity and inclusion. And you and I would be at NGLCC or out in equal in various events. And, uh, but you've just continued to stay focused on that, on that path. And it seems to have done very well for you. Thank you. You know, it's um, a long winding road of entrepreneurship, as you know, <laughs> and, and sometimes there are pivots and evolutions. And uh, it's been really nice to see your smiling face along <laughs> all of the stops on my journey. So, um, yeah, it's been great. You're, you've been uh, a really wonderful friend and ally. Well, thank you. No, I love what you're doing. And I, I love that, uh, you know, from, from where I'm sitting, you have put something together. You've written a book, Inclusive 360. Proven Solutions for an Equitable Organization. Did I get that right? You got it right. But it seems that you brought a lot of what you've been talking about on the road and on your speaking uh, opportunities, and you kind of brought it together into kind of a how-to manual for companies to really be able to figure out a lot of what uh, this diversity and inclusion topic. Yeah, so I wrote this book for organizations pretty early on in their DEI journey. So typically a few hundred to a few thousand employees or even smaller, Companies that that really they have good intentions and they want to do the right thing, but they just don't know where to start. And, and so I wrote a book for that. And the book is really about removing the excuses for not doing the work because it is so solutions oriented. And it also has solutions for every department. So unlike a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion books, it's not just about human resources and, and leadership. It goes a lot beyond that. So it's, you know, there's a section for event planners, there's a section on procurement, there's a section on inclusive marketing, um, product design. So there's really, you know, if an organization moves forward in all of these departments simultaneously, I mean, there can be a lot of alignment and you can really move the needle forward in an authentic way that's comprehensive. Yeah. Well, if I was look, from the outside looking at, I would say it's very much like a how-to manual where you roll up your sleeves and you, because you're not explaining, you're, you're not doing as much of the higher level why, which I also get because people have been, people have been learning that and educated on these topics for many years, but now you're really digging into the how and how to really go about making this happen. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I have a, a few pages, like, you know, maybe three pages about the why, but yeah. You know, the why can be summed up in, you know, five bullet points about data, <laughs> you know, yep. um, essentially. So really, like you said, that point has been made. Um, let's really talk about getting into action in a practical way, in a way that's creative. You know, the, some of the ideas here aren't necessarily necessarily the obvious ones, yeah. but they do come from companies that we all know and love. And brands that are familiar to us who have some really creative ideas. Yeah. So for example, you know, one of the ideas in the book, because a lot of people complain about the, the lack of diversity in the, in the hiring pipeline, one of the concepts in the book is, well, change your requirements and don't require four-year degrees for a lot of your positions. Because IBM, for example, yeah. doesn't require four-year degrees for 43% of their positions. And that's a company with 350,000 employees. And so it's like little changes like that, that can, and you can adapt for your own organization, but that can really get you into action. And there, there are programs and initiatives that are being used, policies that are being used by, by well-known companies that maybe might not be so obvious. Yeah. I'm sure it's very timely now too, because of, you know, uh, not only what we've all gone through collectively here with the pandemic quarantine and, um, but this whole great resignation and so many companies uh, are losing people uh, because the opportunities have changed and, uh, and also other folks have realized that maybe they're doing work that they didn't want to do in the, in this, in this new way of how they look at life. That's absolutely true. And there's a lot of pressure on companies to, create a culture that's a very attractive place to work, especially for millennials and Gen Z who value 
a great culture more than any other generation. They certainly value it more than Gen X, which is yep. um, our generation, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> um, we have a higher, <laughs> we have, I guess, a higher pain threshold, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but. You, you hesitated. You were thinking, I think he's Gen X. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so the <laughs> the um there's a lot of pressure i mean those yeah. are the youngest those are the biggest generations in the workforce yeah. and they have a really high standard of what's acceptable and yeah. uh so they're largely driving the great resignation yeah. um and so it's really challenging companies to step up and uh, in, improve diversity equity and inclusion as a way to create a broader a better culture in general yeah, no, I know from, I think where, where many of us are sitting, it's very, it's fascinating because uh, I can honestly say that, you know, when I first started in the workforce and got my degree and, and went in that direction, you know, it just, uh, you know, I do know that a lot of folks, I was an engineer and a lot of folks had, had felt that that's going to be their lifelong career, that they were going to, they were going to get a job and stay. And several of my friends that I grew up with did stay and they're still in the same company, but that is that and tied in with this where we're at today with Gen Z and millennial mindsets that is all upended and people uh, they're looking at more of a personal personal path and a personal uh, growth when it comes to their employment. You know what? And honestly, it's about time yeah, yeah. <laughs> because a lot of a lot of us. Uh, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for a very long time, so I shouldn't put myself in this category. But, you know, a lot of us have put our mental health aside, put our desire for balance and family aside in order to do what the company required. And, and it's not healthy. It's, it's honestly not healthy. In fact, I don't mean to get off on a tangent, but, and I don't know whether this has anything to do with her work experience, probably not. But this woman, I know I, I moderated a panel that she was a panelist on a few years ago and a really high powered woman. Um, I just found out today that she committed suicide and, you know, we can't mess around with this stuff. People need balance. They need to feel like their, their mental health can be prioritized and even their, our physical health. So it's, it's about time for these conversations. It's too late. I mean, it's, I'm, I guess better late than never. Yeah. 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 No, for, it's got to start at some point. And so, yeah, this, uh, you know, one of the silver linings that I think of the pandemic will be that it accelerated this direction of, of this. I think many, in many ways, this was already happening, but slowly. And so now it's kind of accelerated and moved it forward. And so, yeah, I'm interested to see where a lot of this goes over the next few years. Yeah, it's exciting. And I'm really glad that we're having a lot more serious conversations about racial justice and how that plays into the workforce and workplace. And honestly, Matt, I don't know about you, but you know, we're both out. We've been out for years. Uh, we've built a career around our identities. Yeah. And I was definitely not so up to speed on racial justice and systemic racism and all of that. And, and so I've been on my own journey towards yeah. learning how to be a better ally to black people specifically. But, um, you know, I think it's again, better late than never. And I'm glad that these conversations are starting to happen. Um, are you, uh, going out on the road with this message? I mean, typically you're out giving presentations and speeches and, but because, uh, this is now just barely opening up. So I didn't know if you had plans for being back out. <laughs> Yeah, I've already done a few in-person keynotes, um, have another in-person keynote at the end of the month, and I'm certainly doing a lot of workshops in this, this little <laughs> studio space right here, um, workshops and virtual keynotes. They, they've definitely kept me busy, um, and I'm grateful for it because I am so happy that a lot of people are ready to, to, use, to, to listen to this message and get into action. Yeah, that's great. Well, I know I'm looking forward to uh, to reconnecting in the real world. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to make sure that when I post this, I'm going to have links to how people can find the book, your website and that that one there. Exactly. Yes. I love it. Thank you. So we'll make sure all that's included. And like I said, I just look forward to reconnecting again soon. Yeah, I can't wait to give you a, a hug. In IRL. Exactly. Uh, let's hashtag IRL. Now we're one of the cool kids. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Well, thanks again for being here. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye